Good morning, great people of God. Welcome to today's daily dynamite of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace to be alive in the land of the living. We thank you again for your grace to hear your word. May your name be highly exalted. Father, please be with us as we journey through your word. May your name be highly magnified for us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our topic today says the power of strategy. The power of strategy. And our text is taken from Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Jerubal, that is Gideon, his other name, and his army got an early start and went as far as the spring of Harod. The armies of Midian were camped north of them, down in the valley beside the hill of Moreh. The Lord then said to Gideon, There are too many of you. I can't let all of you fight the Midianites, for then the people of Israel will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. Send home any of your men who are timid and frightened. So 22,000 of them left, and only 10,000 remained who were willing to fight. But the Lord told Gideon, There are two, still too many. Bring them down to the spring, and I will show you which ones shall go with you and which ones shall not. So Gideon assembled them at the water. There the Lord told him, Divide them into two. Decide by the way they drink. In group one will be all the men who cup the water in their hands to get it to their mouths and lap it like dogs. In group two will be those who kneel with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All the others drank with their mouths to the stream. I will conquer the Midianites with these 300, the Lord told Gideon. Send all the others home. So after Gideon had collected all the clay jars and trumpets they had among them, he sent them home, leaving only 300 men with him. During the night, when the Midianite, with the Midianites camped in the valley just below, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, take your troops and attack the Midianites, for I will cause you to defeat them. But if you are afraid, first go down to the camp alone, Take along your servant, Pura, if you like, and listen to what they are saying down there. You will be greatly encouraged and eager to attack. So he took Pura and crept down through the darkness to the outpost of the enemy camp. The vast armies of Midian, Amalek, Amalek, and the other nations of the east were crowded across the valley like locust. Yes, like the sand upon the seashore. And there were too many camels even to count. Gideon crept up to one of the tents, just as a man inside had wakened from a nightmare and was telling his tentmate about it. I had this strange dream, he was saying, and there was this huge loaf of barley bread that came trembling down in our, into our camp. It hit our tent and knocked it flat. The other soldier replied, Your dream can mean one thing. Gideon, the son of Joash, the Israeli, is going to come and massacre all the allied forces of Midian. When Gideon had the dream and the interpretation, all he could do was just stand there, worshipping God. Then he returned to his men and shouted, Get up, for the Lord is going to use you to conquer all the vast armies of Midian. He divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a trumpet and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he explained his plan. When we arrive at the outer guard post of the camp, he told them, do just as I do. As soon as I and the men in my group blow our trumpets, you blow yours on all sides of the camp and shout, we fight for God and for Gideon. It was just after midnight and the change of guards, when Gideon and the hundred men with him crept to the outer edge of the camp of Midian, 
Suddenly they blew their trumpets and broke their clay, clay jars, so that their torches blazed into the night. Then the other two hundred of his men did the same, did the same, blowing their trumpets in their right hands and holding the flaming torches in their left hands, all yelling for the Lord and for Gideon. Then they just stood and watched as the whole vast army, enemy army began rushing around in a panic, shouting and running away. For in the confusion, the Lord caused the enemy troops to begin fighting and killing each other from one end of the camp to the other. And they fled into the night to places as far away as Bethshita, near Zerara, and to the border of Abel Mohola, Mehola, near Tabath. Then Gideon sent for the troops of Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, and told them to come and chase the, and destroy the fleeing army of Midian. Gideon also sent messengers throughout the, the hill country of Ephraim, summoning troops who seized the forts of the Jordan, Jordan River at Beth Barra, thus preventing the Midianites from escaping by going across. Oreb and Zeb, the two generals of Midian, were captured. Oreb was killed at the rock now known by his name, and Zeb at the wine press of Zeb, as it is now as it is now called. And the Israelis took the heads of Oreb and Zeb across the Jordan to Gideon. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. One of the effective ways to gather military intelligence is reconnaissance. That is, spying on the enemy to get first-hand knowledge of their offensive and defensive strength, plans, and weakness. In where we read, we saw the mighty works of God. He called Gideon and told him that this army you are working with, there are too many for me. I don't do multitude. God said to him, you are going to send, send some of them home. Send some of them home. And Gideon asked, if you are timid, if you are fearful, if you cannot stand and fight, you can leave. And many of them left. About 22,000 of them left. Remaining 1,000 something. And God still said, I cannot do with these people. There are still too many. I don't want Israel to boast that they saved themselves by their own strength. I want to do a mighty work that anybody that had it will say, hey, what a mighty God. So he, he asked Gideon to take the remaining soldiers down to the stream. And I will show you how to select the armies that will go with you. Once you get there, any person that you group them into two, anybody that drinks the water by his hand, getting the water like a cup like this, and now lap it like dog, that person will go to the group one. Then anybody that kneels and drinks from the stream direct will go to the group two. And Gideon did as the Lord told him. And the only number that was gotten from the people that used their hands were 300. There were 300. And Gideon sent the other remaining home. But he collected their trumpets, he collected their jars, their clay jar, and with a torch of light in their clay jar. And Gideon now gave it to the remaining 300. And as they were sleeping in the night, the Lord woke Gideon up and told him, Arise now, attack the Midianites, for I am going to give you victory. I'm going to give these people in, in your hand. And when Gideon like, was like, he was like afraid, God sensed it. And he told him, if you are afraid, first of all, I want you to go down to the enemy camp. Listen to what they are saying. It will encourage you to attack. And when Gideon went down to the enemy camp, unfortunately, he listened to a tent where a man was waking by a nightmare. And the man was telling the, the terrible dream he had where a loaf of barley, of bread, was falling into their, their, their camp, and the thing started, you know, crushing down their tents. And the, the man, after telling the, the nightmare, the, the tent mate told him that this will only mean one thing, that Gideon, the son of Joash, is coming 
to massacre all the allies of the Midianites. And when Gideon heard these things, these words, he started glorifying God. He started worshipping God because the enemy himself confessed that God has given them into the hands of Gideon. And when Gideon returned, he told his people, let us, let us fight the Midianites, for the Lord has given them into our hands. Now, what do we do? I will group you into three. Hundred men each. Keep your, your torch at, the, at your la left hand with the clay. Then carry your trumpet at the right hand. Once you had me blow my own trumpet, blow your own. And our, like our topic says, the power of strategy. This is a strategic movement. This is strategy to achieve their, their, their goal. And they now gather around the camps of the enemy. And immediately Gideon blew his trumpet. Bah! All other remaining armies blew, blew their trumpets. And they threw their, their clay, uh, their, the jar of clay, which has the torch in it. And the thing lighted in the, in the camp. And when the enemies woke up, they saw the fire, they saw the trumpet, they saw the shouting and yelling of the people of God. They were thrown into confusion. The Lord threw confusion in their camp. They were thrown into confusion that they could not control themselves. They started running in fear. Running in fear. And the next thing was like they started killing themselves. Because there was confusion. They don't know who, who are you. And there was darkness. They don't know whether the enemy is in the camp or it. They don't know who is who. They started killing themselves. And Gideon sent some men, come, come and fight. Let us destroy these people. So the power of strategy is very, very important in the life of the people of God. As a youth in the body of Christ, you must learn how to plan yourself. You must learn how to plan and strategize. The enemy we face today seems to be like a, a, mighty, a mighty flood. But the Lord says that he will raise a standard that is a strategy to come against the enemy. When the Bible says that they will gather in one way, but in seven ways they will scatter. The Lord knows what he's talking about. They come in one way, they come in unity. But as they came, as they came the Lord now, with his strategy, put confusion among them. And when confusion enters, they started running helter-skelter. They started running in seven ways. They cannot no longer follow one way again. So people of God, God is ready to give you his divine strategy. If you listen to him and obey his commandments. We are living in times of intensifying spiritual warfare. That is why Paul told us, the Christians, to always wear the, our, 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 war, um, our weapon of warfare. To always guard ourselves with the armor of our warfare. Because we wrestle not against flesh and we wrestle against principalities and powers. Rulers of the unseen world, they are strong. And therefore we must wear our weapon of warfare because it will protect us. We must put strategies in place that will help us become better Christians. Raise disciples and tear down the barriers erected against the truth of God. So many things are going around in our world today. So many evil things, so many bad things are going around. People teaching um, some nonsense in the name of uh, gospel, in the name of preaching to the, um, the word of God, preaching the word of God. But they are talking outside the word of God. They are saying many rubbish. But now the Lord has, has you know, the Lord is asking us to strategize for us to raise disciples for us to raise soldiers that will now counter all these things they are saying these days. So we will raise disciples to tear down barriers erected against the truth of God. Believers must know that no matter how daunting the situation seems to be, our adversary is no match for the living God. Our adversaries is no match for the living God. Whether whether the, 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 the storm or the wrath of the storm to see. No demons, no water can swallow the sheep, realize the master of the heavens and earth. So, strategy 
is an important tool in the life of the believers. And uh, it is our task to tune into the heart of our Father and receive from the Holy Spirit of his divine strategy. Food for thought. Strategy eliminates tragedy. Strategy eliminates tragedy. Let us pray. I want you to ask the Lord to help you identify your plans for his plans for your life and inspire you to deploy the right strategy to bring this plan to fruition. Ask the Lord this prayer. Father, please help us, O oh God, help us to understand your plans for our lives and help us, to in, and help us by inspiring us to deploy these strategies so that we will bring this um, these plans into fruition. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on the Daily Dynamites.